Yeah, wow. Great, great session so far, I think. Can I congratulate everyone on the, on the great talks? Um, I have the pleasure to uh, give you a little teaser about the nanoassembler benchtop instrument, which I assume about 50% in this room, if I believe the polls from before, uh, have, are using up to date. And um, Yvonne and Kazuo Mariyama already did a great job at, uh, at uh, introducing this a bit, so I'll see what I can do here. Um, yeah, so for those who are not using the instrument yet, um, why would you be having this uh, nanoassembler instrument? So the nanoassembler benchtop instrument is actually Precision Nanosystems' first technology, microfluidic technology. We've had it for two years now. Uh, as you saw before, the uh, collection has uh, uh, improved and, and has uh, increased quite a bit. It is meant for the development of nanomedicines of different types, different types of nanoparticles, liposomes, lipid nanoparticles, and you can make about 1 to 15 milliliters with it, so it's really a development um, tool uh, with the microfluidic cartridge um, as the really the core piece of the whole thing, which allows you to make, well, to mix in a very, very fast manner, in a very controlled manner, um, it's in a very confined volume, and this is what allows you to actually gain control over your nanoparticle uh, characteristics, size, polydispersity, et cetera. And around this whole cartridge, we actually have a, a box, which is, oh, well, sorry, I just lost my laser here. But <laughs> we have the box um, that is a fully automated system, so that allows you to, in fact, um, not only do some development on it, but anybody else after you, once you have developed your protocol in it, can actually use your protocol on this automated system. Just uh, use two solutions, um, clip everything into the instrument, press go, and you're done. As I said before, the instrument can be used for a number of different materials. So these are only our prime validated uh, materials or that, that that we have data on, that we have literature on, that we can show you. Polymeric nanoparticles, um, oil and water emulsions, liposomes, lipid nanoparticles. I'm sure you obviously uh, saw that we are pretty big at, uh, at the, in the RNA lipid nanoparticle field. Um, but also use of um, inorganic material. And today I want to make you aware of two posters that we're going to present at the CRS conference that would be poster number 256 and 262 um, because we have done a lot of work on well, validating and creating protocols or uh, developing standard protocols with polymers, PLGA, and also more work on liposomes, building up actually on Yvonne's work um, for the encapsulation of lipid nanoparticles. So we have identified a number of um, uh, uh, sorry, a number of uh, uh, details and a number of um, parameters that will allow you to make uh, nicely reproducible uh, polymeric nanoparticles and also um, encapsulate hydrophobic drugs into liposomes. And with that, I think it's poll time again. Please get out your phones. <laughs> All right, so and this question, uh, I would like to know what main challenge you face with your current nanoparticle formulation technique? Oh, oh, something's happening. Larger batches, very nice. Well, I feel like, yeah, there is a bit of everything, and the idea of the nano platform, assembler platform is obviously that um, a lot of these challenges are the challenges that we want to address. Uh, scale up, reproducibility, um, making it easier for you to, to make these nanoparticles. All right. Oh, I need better reproducibility. I like that. Okay. Oh, still changing, still changing. Who's the winner? All right, so all those people who want larger batches, I want you at the blaze afterwards. 